It was, it was our biggest pop up we did, and yeah, the feedback was like crazy. And we're like, okay, that's, yeah. that's it. Like, what it doesn't matter what I think, it's what the people are. Situation, but essentially, what we were doing in the garage, we're just gonna copy and paste that yeah. into a restaurant, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then we'll kind of build our business from there, yeah. right? And we'll see what we need. We didn't anticipate what happened next, right? There's more people, more eyes were on the page, more people were had time to be on their phones, everyone's on their phones all the time, people were bored. The way you combat that is you have to have better processes in place. Mixing family or friends. You know, like don't work with your spouse or whatever. Yeah. Like a lot of we're not really working yeah. with our spouse though and we're not really business partners either. Like we're, this is our project that we started together. Stepping back and letting the staff do everything. Um, and everything is good versus having like two page menu. Mm -hmm. And like you start thinking, what are you really good at? Like everything like yeah. how are you yeah, yeah. Like, what's your thing welcome to the built by me podcast today we're chatting with shadi and mania owners of buttermilk here in london ontario they've grown their restaurant from pop-ups to in their garage to now in their second location after just a few years going viral on instagram we talk about how they started where they're at now and what they've learned along the way so without further ado let's get into the episode welcome to the built by me podcast i'm mo and I'm Taina. And joining us today, we have Shad, Shadi, and Munia. And they are the owners of Buttermilk. Buttermilk is a fried a chicken shop based out of London, Ontario. Thanks for being on, guys. Thank you for having Thanks us. Thanks for having us. We're actually at one of their, their second location. It's so cute. So if you're watching on YouTube, <laughs> it's real nice in here. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Why don't we start? Why don't you guys give us some background on, you know, who you guys are and you know, how you guys got here. Yeah, for sure. So my name is Shadi, um, and this is Munya, my wife. Um, we are the owners of Buttermilk, uh, which is a fried chicken uh, restaurant in London, Ontario. We have two locations. Um, we've opened them both within three years and started off as a little pop-up at my mom's house. <laughs> and uh, it grew to, uh, you know, to be a pretty popular local spot that, you know, we're still going, going strong today. That's pretty much the gist of it. So what, what pop-up, explain pop-up, yeah. what do you mean by pop-up? Pop-up, the mastermind of the pop-up was over here, I'll <laughs> let her explain what the pop-up was. Uh, so essentially, like, Shadi really wanted to make food at home and we were just experimenting. <clears throat> he wanted to open uh, a business, we didn't know what it was about, like what he wanted exactly. Uh, but we, uh, we love food, so, uh, <laughs> uh, so he was like fried chicken, we're like, hey, why not, there's nothing really around here, so we were just trying food at home. Um, and then eventually I'm like, why don't I just share this on Instagram um, and see what happens from there. Mm. Um, he was kind of hesitant, but I'm just like, you know, I'm going to post the first post on my story. And it just happened from there. We just said, um, like, we're, we're going to be selling chicken. Um, we have a list of people. Let us know if you want any. And then it just went from there. We said, like, people were asking about it. Yeah. And that's just, we made it, like, kind of seem exclusive. And it just, that's just how it came. How many people tasted like the first? first I'd say the pop first, up. the first yeah. cr group was more family and friends. It's yeah. like probably like fifty people. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. So the first pop up was so just to kind of build off of what you said in terms of what, what buttermilk was and how it kind of started was um, I always knew that I wanted to own a business. I yeah. never knew what business it was going to be. I didn't know mm -hmm. what industry it was going to be. Um, we're both very creative people. We like mm -hmm. to create things. Whether you know. Even like if you look at our logo and our store and stuff like that, it's just, you know, it's, just, it's more of a creative thing. We don't have really any experience in culinary or design or anything like that. It's just, you know, we both get the creative juices flowing. But mm -hmm. um, so we knew that at some point we wanted to own a business. And then, um, you know, we love to eat. We're foodies. So, you know, going to like, you know, going to Toronto, going to these bigger cities like that, you start seeing this is before like that Popeye's fried chicken uh, sandwich craze that was happening yeah, right yeah. before COVID around that time. Um, Went to this. We went to a couple places in Toronto, and we thought, you know, like something like this in London would be really cool, mm -hmm. right? We don't have anything. The scene here at the time was a little bit boring. A lot of chains, you know, nothing really kind of that got people excited. Yeah. And I thought, you know, if someone really did this and executed it properly in London, I think it'd be, it'd be really, really popular. So from that point on, it became like, okay, let's just experiment with this recipe. Let's see what it would kind of. It was never the intention to open two, three stores or whatever. What it is and go and you know make it a big thing it was kind of like hey let's experiment with this recipe let's see kind of how you do this and it kind of snowballed and then you know mo was at our you know at our, my mom's house <laughs> and my brother and they were tasting recipes and we were doing these types of things and you know um during covid during the peak of it at the beginning when we were like locked down we had the chance to kind of sit down and even you know mess around with the recipes more and at that point when he was like why don't you try to 
do a pop-up because at this time you started seeing people doing these home bakeries and these mm -hmm. home little things and they were selling people were bored yeah and you started to see a lot of people starting these little businesses from their house and she was like you should definitely put it out there and see and I'm, I'm a lot more conservative and in that type of way where I'm kind of more shy to do things like I, it takes me a little it takes, it gives, yeah, I need a little push to get there yeah. mm -hmm. and she pushed me and she's like no we're gonna do it and let's see what happens so we did it and that's where that ball started rolling from we did the first yeah. pop-up family friends only you know anyone interested um, the first post was kind of funny. It looked terrible. <laughs> like the chicken looked terrible. Yeah, we didn't know what we were doing. But you know, people were bored and people wanted to try something. So you know, it started there, and then people started tagging. Like we had a little Instagram page, and people started tagging it, mm. making it seem like it was like a this restaurant that was coming, which it wasn't. It was just us in the, in the kitchen, in the in the garage. I love it. It's right. Amazing. So yeah. that's where it started from. And then the next pop up. Okay, why don't we try doing the sandwich now? Like that's mm. what we really wanted to do. And then that one was the one where you know you know, the same people ordered again, but we had a few more people added to that group, right? And then we started doing delivery because the first one was a pop-up from my mom's garage and people would just come pick it up, right? We'd have time slots and stuff like that to kind of organize ourselves. Mm -hmm. But the second one, we started doing delivery. So we got her brother, my friends, you know, family helping us. You know, we started getting the Excel sheet out and starting putting... Um, like who lives where, like, yeah, trying yeah, to it was set up definitely. deliveries and all these things, <laughs> and then that's when it really snowballed because then people would tag the Instagram page. So it wasn't it, yeah. we did have the pop up. We also had the Instagram page mm -hmm. that was small at the time that people started tagging, mm -hmm. made it seem legit, and it was cool and it was different. We didn't have anything like that to that level mm -hmm. in the city at the time, and then just, that was it. it. Started snowballing, snowballing, snowballing from there. Yeah. So, yeah, it's really it's really interesting because you know what you what you really essentially did is you created like this word of mouth marketing buzz Absolutely. in a sense right yeah. because yeah. there was an exclusive aspect to it that people started talking about it online yeah plus you got to remember too it was covid as it well was. so it was like a perfect formula for exactly. that you know to build off that point that exclusivity we didn't realize how popular it was going to be or how many people would want to order so we actually had a finite amount of product or chicken yeah. that we could sell people so we, we, obviously weren't, we weren't a restaurant right we didn't have we didn't know so yeah. you know we were actually sold out we'd have a certain amount we said we're sold out we can't take any more orders which created that next wave, like right. you know, we want it next time. So like that exclusivity became, mm -hmm. you know, people wanted to be that person that had it, right? Yeah, Just yeah, like anything yeah. else. I think right? we it had was like, um, we put, put Instagram posts, we'd have the thing, we'd be sold out on it. Mm -hmm. We created that demand and that kind of followed us even till now, because like up until now, we still do sell out at times, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's fresh product, because we try to, we don't want to hold on to any product. We want it to always be fresh. Mm -hmm. We will sell like yesterday, we sold out at our work location. Like it happens periodically, right? Where we just get a crazy weekend where we don't anticipate. So it's still that demand, sorry. Still that demand <laughs> till today. Mm -hmm. That kind of that perception that buttermilk is exclusive or they're always busy or they yeah, have a like, lineup. Yeah, get it while it's hot. Right? So like, it's, kind yeah. of, it's, it's kind of carried on yeah. from the pop It actually happened mm -hmm. though. It wasn't yeah. kind of intentional to it be that way. Yeah. It was more just like, you know, this is working. Happened. This is, yeah. whoa, this is weird. Okay, let's, you know, it worked the first time. Let's try it again. And it kind of was, you know. Yeah. Worked from the, worked from yeah. there. Yeah. I was gonna say yeah, like gonna we say had um, we had I think five pop ups total. Okay. Um, and each one like it was much bigger, much better. Mm -hmm. uh, we started off with dark meat, and I kept uh, telling Shadi like we should try white yeah. meat. I'm very and, stubborn. So yeah. When I have an idea, when I have <laughs> an idea very. of what I want to do, I'm like this is the way it is. Because traditionally, when you when when you, when you look at fried chicken, what, what is fried chicken? It's typically leg meat. It's drums. It's thighs. Mm -hmm. it's that. That's that's what fried chicken is. And then obviously you'll have like your tenders and your chicken breasts and stuff like that. But fried chicken traditionally mm -hmm. is dark meat. And then all those places in Toronto that we were trying were all doing dark meat. She doesn't like dark meat at all. No. Like she, she won't eat dark meat. She's like, no, do, do white meat. So the first two sandwich pop-ups were dark meat. And, you know, in our community, people aren't shy to, to speak their mind and say what, what's what, right? <laughs> but, like, with dark meat, it's dark. Even when it's cooked all the way, it looks, it looks gray. It doesn't sound white, right? Like, it, you know, if you, don't, if you don't understand that cut of meat, it's going to look. And people were saying, oh, it's not cooked. And I don't, you know, this and that. But it was. And that's why we kind of flipped over to the white meat. We made we did the white meat as our last pop up. Actually, yeah. it was the very last pop up we did, we made it like buttermilk white, like like, like a white Ooh, meat type of thing yeah. that we did. And people, oh, nice. oh, this is different. So let's try this one. <laughs> yeah. And it was our biggest pop up. It was, we yeah, did. it was like 200, 250 yeah, people. The feedback was like oh. crazy, and we're like, okay, that's yeah. that's it. Like, well, it doesn't matter what I think; it's what the people want. I think the lesson here is always listen to me. Absolutely, yes. absolutely. She always, always knows right. What's up. Absolutely. <laughs> we, learned, we, learned. we had to learn the hard way yes, multiple yes. times. But yeah. At least you learned it. We learned. <laughs> we still, still to this day, we still learn. We still learn. Yeah. yeah. Who sure. created the, the, the logo? You guys were talking about, um, like, when you started off, you had an Instagram, and yeah. you just posted it on your story. How did the actual brand come to be? So, yeah, like, the idea was when we first started thinking of, okay, if we're going to make a business like this, it was the big fried chicken sandwich, that crunchy 
fried chicken sandwich or whatever it was. We try to find a name that would kind of, you know, be not too long, not too complicated, something that would relate to the product. Yeah. And there were names like different things, the things that related to the chicken and stuff. But then I was like, buttermilk's cool, right? And then you do your Google searches, what, what exists. That's a, that's a yeah, pretty yeah. cool name, buttermilk, right? And at the, at the beginning of anything, it kind of sounds weird, and then it kind of starts going, and then it sounds legit, right? So it's the like beginning, Google. Exactly. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so it's like it was buttermilk, the full word buttermilk was the first thing. And then um, we started playing around with logo makers and stuff. Again, like saying we're creative, right? Yeah. We like to play around with it. And what, what, the way it was going for me, it was more kind of like what you think a fried chicken place would look like. That's how it was looking at the beginning. Mm. Okay. There was a lot of red like pictures, and whites the, and yeah, yeah, yeah. chicken and stuff like okay, that. It was okay. very, very generic looking. <laughs> um, that's when he'd always show yeah. me like his logs. I'm like, no, no, we can't do that. <laughs> no. no, what is this? Yeah. I love the honesty. Yeah. So then no, eventually, sure. like we just our brains came together and she was um, the one like guiding me to like, no, this looks stupid. Yeah. This is not it. Like this is not it at all. You need to make it look you know more elegant or more clean or whatever it was so like mm. we kept refining and refining and refining until mm. we got to what we have now again like i was saying the whole word buttermilk was was the name or the name of the business eventually when we were when we did that first pop-up we had stickers made and the whole thing with our same kind of style but with the full mm. word mm. it was just too big it's kind of it wasn't that legible so we had to you know, there were other businesses out there that would, you know, do the vowel list thing. And look, let's see, okay, well, then it's pretty symmetrical, six letters, mm -hmm. it worked, right, it would look nice. So, like, okay, let's just leave it like that, right? Yeah. So, it's and that's very how, clean, yeah. very modern. Yeah. If you're watching on YouTube, it's like yeah. white, gold, yeah. very, and then the greenery really yeah. helps bring in <laughs> yeah, that yeah. minimalistic mm -hmm. feel to yeah. it. Yeah. So, yeah. it's yeah. like, and I think that's kind of cool bringing in something that with typically, um, like fried chicken being fast food yeah. this seems more upscale seems yeah more this is more like retail more. it feels more yes. retail and that's kind of the way the direction we wanted to go with it we like we were going to say if we we're going to do something yeah. what would we want to see yeah. when we go somewhere that's really what it came down to again we don't have any any experience in you know we're not chefs we're not cooks we're not kitchen designers we're none of that stuff mm -hmm. which like what would when we go somewhere what do we like to see and what makes us feel not like what makes it feel good mm -hmm. like let's try to do that in fried chicken that way it will stand out because we didn't we didn't invent fried chicken we didn't invent fried chicken sandwich we didn't invent anything mm -hmm. right. right but it's like how do we put a spin on it that most people aren't doing mm -hmm. and that's kind of how it came about to, to look like this yeah that's really what it was so go back go back a little bit to your story so yeah. you guys are married yes obviously yes. um restaurant i see on the shirts established in 2020 yes 2020 was covid yes okay so that's like you know what i mean um, people are like probably wondering like how how, how do you even do that like yeah. how do you there was lots of lockdowns were going on you couldn't travel you couldn't right. do anything which feels like such a long time ago I know. when covid I know. happened i know yeah um walk us through that process right because you started with the pop-ups right that was was that during covid that was right that was the reason we did it is because we were in because lockdown of COVID. And it was, we were bored, there was nothing to do, and there was like a time where we, you know, we weren't going anywhere, so let's, you know. It started during the pop-up, so the, sorry, the pop-up started during the lockdowns, right? Yeah. yeah. Which made newer... people more, you know, paying attention to the brand. Especially, right. nothing new was open, your patios were closed, nothing, everything was stopped. Right. But this type of stuff was allowed, and it was, the thing with fried chicken, it's not an easy thing to do. It's a lot yeah. of work, it's a lot of mess, it's, it's mm -hmm. you know, it's not the, the most, uh, you know, elegant thing to do in the background yeah, yeah it's, um, it's it's a lot of work so something like that when we did the pop-ups it felt very different so many people excited that's kind of where the ball started rolling so then as we went through that process of the pop-ups 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 we started seeing other at this point we're talking you know we've done the pop-ups now the brand's kind of getting established things like mm -hmm. that we're still in covid right um you start seeing other fried chicken places start popping up right start opening little places yeah, yeah. then it's like not like at that point, I wasn't thinking of, obviously it was in the back of our head that we're going to open at some point, maybe we'll start we're, looking, maybe a food truck, right? All, yeah, like I was going to say, we're thinking a food, food truck, maybe, was, maybe we'll do a food yeah. truck, maybe we'll, maybe see if there's a spot, some, in a little place in some other restaurant that we can kind of just see, right? Yeah. But we started seeing people, I wouldn't say competition, but like you start seeing people try, thinking in our line of thought, mm -hmm. start opening places and it's like if we don't do it now, we're not, we're going to miss, miss we're going to miss it or some, or you know, these other places are going to kind of take yeah, our yeah. we've kind of built in terms of you know that hype you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying at the time so then we started out actively looking at, at at locations and stuff like that and then we found our you know work with location and that was at the end of 2020 and then um there were a lot of issues with permits in the city and delays and stuff like that so that's why it was established in 2020 
we signed our lease in 2020. The business was, uh, you mm -hmm. know, incorporated in 2020. It was supposed to be in 2020, open in January, January 1st. That was kind of the, the hope. We ended up opening in March just because of all the delays. So that's why the established 2020. You go from garage to restaurant. Yeah. It's a much different operation. Yes, it is. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not like, it's I can imagine different. fryers in the garage and, yeah. and, then, and then going to an actual full-blown operation, mm -hmm. staff, industrial fryers. You know what I mean? Yeah. Walk us through that. That's probably not easy. Yeah. Did it become easier? Some, or or how did you guys figure? How did you guys navigate your way? Maybe that's that, that's the question. I feel like it's one of those things where it's fight or flight kind of thing. Like you have no choice but to figure it out, right? You signed the lease, you paid the money for the restaurant, right? You you, you everything's in there. You you know. Um, so what we thought when we first opened, do you want to do you want to walk them through? I mean, that we first, definitely did not walk them through that first uh, you know training period. Yeah, and employees yeah. And like we definitely didn't anticipate. We like our opening um so again like we have no experience he in any of this stuff um shadi thought like he was gonna have his friends help us like we even got shirts and they're all like extra large i'm like shadi i think we should get like you know <laughs> well the reason we smaller. thought that's because we just thought we would copy like the pop-ups pop -ups, yeah the pop -up, right. we can just copy that yeah. like we'll our friends better, and family uh, would help yeah, us we thought right we like a better equipment just a better situation <laughs> but essentially what we were doing in the garage we're just going to copy and paste that into yeah. the yeah. restaurant yeah. and then we'll kind of build our business from there yeah. right we'll see what we need we didn't anticipate what happened next right it sounded great on paper it sounded, it sounded great <laughs> yeah. just, you know but what happened next was once people thought heard that we were opening um the very first day we opened it was supposed to be had, a soft open it was a soft open yeah. just friends and family and then you started having people random people walk in you're not gonna you're not gonna tell them no right so yeah. we took them and it was it was getting quite busy and we're like okay well this is kind of crazy but you know we'll see tomorrow so the next date but also sorry to cut you yeah. off at that point too it was just me shoddy working i think maybe my brother and like two of his friends mm -hmm. so no one was really trained pro like we, we, had a, no, we had a couple of employees we did we had a few people day? that used to work with Munya that came in. I had people that used to work with me at other jobs and some people that were looking for work. Just we were talking like, you know, set maybe five, six people outside of us that were employees. Um, so we did that first pop-up okay. The next day when it was the official opening day, we had like an online platform at the time and we mm -hmm. walk into the store and there's like a hundred receipts printed on the floor, right? Because they, they pre-print, right? They print uh, pre-ordering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it'll print while you're not there. So we come into the store the next morning there's like a hundred receipts wow. from the printer on the ground. Yeah. And we're just like, we're uh -oh. like, what are you going to do? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. we're, we're sweating, like we don't know what to do. So right away we turn off the online and then from that day we were open. And we only had at the time as well, two fryers. Like we had two physical fryers and the first day was crazy. Like we were insanely busy lineups out the door. That was like insane, insane, insane. And we were getting crushed, right? But that's so, the validation, right? Yeah. I mean, you yeah. talk about like your pop-ups. Yeah. You got the validation yeah. with like the hype buildup. Yeah. And then from day one, which is a soft opening, yeah. like yeah. That, 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 that must have been like, what is that? What did that, what did that feel like? Though? It feels I mean, it probably was overwhelming. It didn't, it didn't feel, feel real. Well, it was very overwhelming. Yeah. Extre extremely overwhelming, again, because we're not business owners, right? We're not traditional. Like we, we do own this business now, but we're mm -hmm. not traditional business. We're also very young when we opened it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like it's, we're talking three years now. I just, like I was like 26 maybe when we started mm -hmm. it. That was like 22, um, 22. 22, we're yeah. young, right? We, right. we come from a background yeah. of sales and like- At that time I was service. working full time also at the bank. So right. it was, it was yeah. Yeah. very hard to do exactly. both at the our same only, time. Our yeah. only real experience was the pop-ups that yeah. we, right, and how it worked. And, you know, when you see all of that, it's very overwhelming and how to navigate it, you know, and how to navigate customers, how to navigate all that type of stuff. Um, and we're still learning everything. We're still learning how to use the equipment. We're still learning how to do POS. Yeah. We're still learning how to manage em People. employees. Yeah, right? that was, that was so hard too. So that first day was crazy, right? We survived it. Um, that night, we're like, we need more employees. Like, this is impossible. <laughs> we're going yeah. to be in deep, deep trouble. Right? So, so we literally did the next day, we put up a posting on our Instagram. And anyone who applied pretty much we hired. Yeah, like, please. We hired like 20 <laughs> people that next day. Like, yeah, just yeah, come yeah. in, we'll talk wow. to you, just meet you in person, and you're, you're in, right? So, again, that, that stuff was challenging right? because you start bringing in the people that you don't really screen properly. Right. Yeah. Those, that yeah. became a massive challenge after that was, you know. Yeah. Well, right. you, were, you, were, you were kind of in a mode where it's like the car is built and it's moving. It's moving. And yeah, you got to gotta keep building the car. Yeah. yeah. And you're like, this is moving really fast. Yeah. 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 It was, it was exactly what it was. Like, it was, like I said, you have no choice. You have to figure yeah. something out, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, the next day we bought a second fryer. We got it installed. You know, like, we had employees. People, like, me and Monia were working every day, all day at the time. Like, mm -hmm. we, like when people say, you know, when you open a business, it's going to be challenging. That, yeah. that's, that's what that was, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. All day, every day, seven days a week, 
were there working on the front lines, right? Mm -hmm. There was no time to eat. Like we didn't even, which is funny, we had all our menu offerings. We didn't even try no. half our menu. Yeah. Until no like way. months, yeah. Right? We like just thought, okay, these are, these are like, for example, like, the sandwiches we did try, right? we tried them, whatever. <laughs> but like the fr like our deluxe fries or mac, mac and, and cheese, cheese, that type of stuff. Like we didn't really try it before. Like a lot of things that we did was very, very like mom and pop. Like at home, <laughs> I don't know. Like we just kind of were given this opportunity and we just kind of figured it out as we went. It was insane. It's funny. Like even like one of our items, the buttermilk fries, for like months. I'm like, who's eating this? There's like coleslaw and pickles on fries. Because she's we not. She didn't get it. I was more. I was. <laughs> I'm the more. I'm the one who created the menu. I'm the foodie, like the, the, the one who's creative with the food. <laughs> She's more the, create, the creative with the physical, the store, branding, the branding, you know, that yeah, stuff. Yeah. Right? So more picky of an eater. So she didn't even try that stuff. And she was like, I don't know what And that. now it's my favorite. No, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? So yeah, just that first initial wave of, of uh, challenges were, were crazy. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Interesting. Were you ready for that? Like, that was such a rapid change. Absolutely just, no. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. But there's no choice. Like, what do you do? Yeah. What do you do at that point? You've already, you've already, fit, you, you, you know, you become survive. You get into survival yeah. mode, right? Yeah. We just survived it. What do you think is better if you were to over prepare, like think, okay, we're gonna get a hundred orders and then maybe not get it, or okay, we don't know what it's gonna be and then get this hundred orders and now have to figure it out. I think I think if you, in a perfect world, if you were to have the choice, right? Mm -hmm. I think in like to say like you're going to get to that point very quickly. Like mm -hmm. let's say they say okay, in one month you're going to hit that tar hit that point. Yeah. You definitely want to prepare yourself. Right. You definitely want time. Like, if we compare like our other store versus our location mm -hmm. here, we're in a much newer area or development. Less people are in this area. We have mm -hmm. more time here to learn things that we didn't have a chance mm -hmm. to learn. We have more time to train properly here. Mm -hmm. We have more time to understand our equipment better or understand processes better. Mm -hmm. So that stuff is very valuable to learn, right? Mm -hmm. But obviously, you're blessed if you're opening your door and you're yeah. already yeah, yeah. you're already Busting you're already door. three years. You know, if you're thinking, okay, eventually I want to get to this point, you're already yeah. at that point before you've even opened your door. Yeah, right. And that's a blessing. Like I don't think that we can really attribute much. I mean, we did something right. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? But again, yeah. we don't have that background to know what we did exactly that mm -hmm. made people come like that. We knew it would be probably you know decent. We we, we yeah. anticipated because that's why we opened the business because we thought you could, there isn't a demand for this type of thing. Mm -hmm. But to just start from the pinnacle is very crazy. Yeah. Right. From what I've heard from your story, so it's like, your, how did your Instagram story and then you telling, you know, your friends come come by and take yeah. that up, like the, creating that word of mouth of just like your community mm -hmm. and then now like going viral or like people now talking about it, other people tagging it. How did Instagram and social yeah, media? Yeah, that's all you. That's, that's your domain. <laughs> um, I mean, at that time, like food, like restaurants, like not really many restaurants were very... Um, like they were viral and like mm -hmm. using social media yeah. um, so it worked obviously to our benefit where I just posted that and then because of our community uh, Shadi has a, like Shadi grew up here so he has a lot of friends a lot of family um, that really spread the word um, and then I just I guess I saw that it, we were using it like Instagram was one of those things at that time where no one was really taking pictures like restaurants weren't really using it mm -hmm. um, but we, I, we tried doing that and um, it worked out yeah. I think it kind of snowballed in that way, though, like where you first try something and then you see the traction from it. Yeah. And then yeah. you like, even till today, going. we still do like, we're still very active. Like our, our Instagram page grows, you know, much bigger as, as the weeks and months go on. As ev after every post that we do, we see that growth. So it's still, mm -hmm. even till today, it's still moving yeah. from that original, um, that original post that we had. Right. Yeah. But it was just, I think it was a perfect storm almost at the beginning. Right, it was more people, more eyes were on the page. More people were had time to be on their phones. Everyone's on their phones all the time. People were bored. Right, it became a local thing. Right, and an, almost like an exclusive thing where you can't get this thing all the time. Right, it's it's only gonna happen once when they did, when they decide there's a pop up. That's when you're gonna get it. Right, so people were watching the page, were paying mm -hmm. attention to the page. Right, as we you know got better with the social media. Right, the page grows. Right, so um, but I think at the beginning having that network of people. And just relying on that network to at least get your you going mm -hmm. we're blessed to have that in our you know just mm -hmm. we have good friends and good family around us that are always kind of um encouraging us to do some things and like they're always always supporting right mm -hmm. what like when you reflect back on that that from that from the garage to the rolodex of of receipts on the ground yeah. what, what what was the biggest learning for you guys from that that's a good question i think the biggest learning was you need 
to prepare much more, <laughs> right? It yeah. is like, yes, you can have your ideas, right? Like we all have our, oh, this would be cool to do this. And then when you try to go to execute it, there's a lot more to it than what you think it requires, right? Yeah. You need like the, for example, having the correct equipment in place, having the correct uh, infrastructure in place, um, preparing for, you know, that type of thing. If you were to get to, you have to kind of prepare for the, I guess it's a good, the worst, preparing for the worst in terms of yeah. that volume in case it comes. Um, at the very beginning, of course, you want to be conscious financially of, of what you're spending on, right? When you're new and you don't know, you've never opened a restaurant before, you, maybe you're not going to buy the most expensive fridge or fryers or whatever. But once you realize that your whole business relies on your, I guess, your preparedness, which is your equipment pretty much, or your people or whatever it is, mm -hmm. or having good systems in place, that's kind of, you know, the key, I'd say. That's, that's where you... You need to kind of focus. There's, a, there's a balance, right? Yeah. I mean, there's, well, that's what we did, there's, right? there's, there's two, there's two ways yeah. of looking at it. You yeah. can almost look at it as a, you know, by nature of just like diving into the business, mm -hmm. you were able to kind of, you were forced to figure things out on the, right. on the, on the, on the go, as opposed to just saying, you know what, I'm going to delay, maybe open a year from now or six months from now and try to really figure things out. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's, yeah, there's, there's, there's almost two ways of looking at it. I almost yeah. feel like you guys, by, by nature of rushing into the business in a sense, or yeah. like, by, by creating that hype ahead of time with the social media with the pop-ups created that that you know that hype that everyone was like okay they're open now mm -hmm. i can yeah. actually get this this is not like yeah. a sold out you know what right. i mean yeah. so you kind of you kind of created that storm yourself in yeah. a sense you, you know do. what i mean well, here's, well the other thing which is crazy is like because it was covid okay mm -hmm. so it was busy by itself it was, it was getting popular but because it was covid you weren't allowed to have more than four people in the building at a time which forced oh, people yeah, to yeah. wait outside, line, right? Yeah. And I, lines, when I used to yeah, work in sales, lines. I used to work in cell phone sales, we always used to say lines, lines bring lines. Mm -hmm. When people see the line, they think that place is busy, of course. right? Obviously, because there's a line there. Mm -hmm. So it must be good, but there must be something special about it. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to I want to get in the line, right? Because yeah. I want to I be special. Everyone wants to be in the line, right? Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. So that the lines that were created, obviously we were busy, but like if I had this restaurant at the time, maybe you wouldn't have seen the lineups, right? Or if your people were allowed to come inside, you wouldn't see the lineup, then the hype maybe not, wouldn't have built like that. Right. So it's just like a perfect storm of timing, right? So like, yeah. it was a new business already getting traction online. And then people had to, were forced to wait outside. And then each group had to wait on their marker. If you remember in COVID, you had those distance markers. Yes, yeah. <laughs> if you were a group of people, you couldn't, you'd have to stand with your group on the marker, right? right? So you'd see like a group of four or five, four or five, like just mm -hmm. groups of people waiting in line out front this little store and it's snaking around and it's going you know far so yeah. that created that extra hype so now right. even till today people say buttermilk's always busy they always have a lineup when we don't right yeah even people will say that right there are times where it is busy like any other restaurant when it gets busy you gotta wait in line right but like have the line out the door yeah. people still have that perception of our business three years later Right, because, because of that, yeah. Like right. people will still call us and ask for sold out, or we have chicken. Like, yeah, we have oh, chicken. No, right. You can come. <laughs> We're open. We're open till eight. Yeah. You should yeah. have like an automatic thing on your phone. The current <laughs> wait time. Yeah, you should. You should. Yeah, we really should. But yeah, that's that's kind of how that happened at the beginning, right? That's really that cool. Hype. It just naturally happened. Yeah, that's kind of like a lesson in like. Yes, it's good to be prepared. Yeah. It's good to like you know have things figured out, but you also just need to sometimes just jump you in just and stick or swim. Yeah. Like you have to catch the rush and. If you have the password for it, you know you can do it. You've had the pop-ups. You guys, you guys tested the water a little bit, and yeah. then you're just yeah. like, okay, let's just jump in. Yeah. And then um, I feel like a lot of people maybe overanalyze themselves into not opening, and yeah. then maybe missing a trend when they, true. they yeah. just yeah. did yeah. it. They could have learned along the way. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, you would. Th I mean, I mean, most most restaurants. Again, I I, I got to stop saying this because I, I you know things are changing, right? People are doing things differently, but yeah. most people like will actually work in a restaurant. You know, grow up in that an organization and be like, oh, maybe I can own a franchise, and they go down the franchise path of like, you know, like let's say a Popeyes or mm -hmm. a Mary Browns or whatever kind of fried chicken restaurant there is. But you guys chose like to go away from like the traditional fast food element of it, right? Um, how how do you think Buttermilk has has basically maintained that quality in its food? Because it's different. It's not. It's not. It's not like fast food. Yeah. So right? I think. I think but it's from, kind of fast. I think though. from the beginning, right? The whole concept of or when we're, we're when we started, we're talking about being creative and things like that. This was our project, right? So it wasn't like I want to open a restaurant. How do I do it? Then I don't care about restaurants, or I don't care that much about food. I just want to open a business, mm -hmm. right? I did say that at the beginning, right? I want to open a business. But when I started this project, when we started it together, we we're very passionate about the project itself. And what it was because it was ours right 
that's like it was our business, it was our our ideas, our brainchild, right? Mm -hmm. That this is so that's like every, even till today, every aspect of it is under the microscope for us, right? We watch it. So like yes, we open it because we want to be a successful business, but we open it actually primarily as our project to see what would happen with something we care about, right? So we really care about what we're doing, right? We care about what what people think of it, so we care what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Right, so when, when someone posts on Instagram, they tag us. Oh, I got buttermilk, and the sandwich looks like it was squished or whatever. We'll mess it right the now. Store. Call the store. <laughs> we call the store right away. Right, we're like, you know, who cut that bun? You know what I'm saying? Because we get everything fresh, right? So like, there's, you know, we still, we're still really conscious of what it should look like, what it should feel, what yeah. it should taste like. It needs to cross, like, like check all those boxes. It needs to taste really good. It needs to look good. It needs to feel good. It needs when you come in, you feel like. This, I'm excited about having. We're still like that with our own food till this day. Mm -hmm. That we're excited to eat it because like, it's still our favorite food, right? So, um, even like the uh, just the quality control of it, right? Just having the process, marination process of the chicken, right? There's like a 24 hour marination process that we do with the chicken. We take care of it, right? And the, every cut of chicken needs to look a certain way. Um, the way it's breaded needs to, you know, we know when it's not breaded properly. I can tell, right? You can't hide it, right? So like things like that, we really pay attention to detail. The same way with the physical look of the store, we pay attention to those details. Mm -hmm. Um, we're paying all, the most attention to the food, right? Because we care about the food itself. We, it's less about the business making money, more about what are we putting out there, right? The quality process. The quality. Yeah, that's yeah. how the quality we try to maintain it. We try to use the best ingredients, the best processes, you know, that's kind of... So that also like goes hand in hand like experience, like customer experience, like that's very important to us. Yeah. So it's not just about the food and how the, how the store looks, obviously. There's more important things... Um, like when we go to restaurants and that feeling that we have, like the experience, we want people to experience that. Mm -hmm. So like right when they walk in, like if we have to drill like our staff, like, you know, make sure you're, you're, you're noticing the customer, you're saying hi, like you're on, like, you know, you're just happy because people feel that, right? And it, it, yes. it makes a difference like when you're sitting here and you're eating the food, it makes a difference like the customer service and like how we actually also operate on the other hand when like we're... Um, like our staff's like happy and you can, you can tell like you know that the food's really good too yeah. because we they wouldn't be like that if we weren't good like managers so yeah. it all goes from the top down I feel as well it's a holistic experience yeah it's like for I, sure I honestly feel like my food tastes better when I'm in a better mood yeah. so yeah. it's like yeah. if people are if they're upset or if they're you know not happy to see me mm -hmm. I'm like oh this doesn't taste yeah. as good yeah exactly. Exactly. And I think I think just to kind of put all that together it's like if you're doing it for the right reasons, you're mm -hmm. in the business for the right reason, this hopefully is the result, right? Yeah. right. When you have passion about what you're doing, about the project, what you know, the, the decisions you made, and you know, the you know, your creations and the things that you're giving to the public, if that is your focus, mm -hmm. the people will notice, right? The food's yeah. good, right? They know the customers notice little things, they notice the detail, the attention, the care that you put into your, your business, yeah. keeps them coming back, right? Mm -hmm. So that is number one if I had any advice to somebody is right care about what you're doing the success comes i know it's cliche to say that but mm -hmm. if you know if it's meant to be it's going to be anyways but that's where you know being able to have the patience of your, you know, to be in business like this it's a very like you were saying it's a very challenging business yeah. it takes a lot of your time takes a lot of effort takes a lot of attention to detail it takes a lot of uh, a lot of things but if you love what you're doing you love that product you love that that project that you started mm -hmm. then it's much easier right to not give up on it or to you know Sink, sink or swim type of thing like you're yeah. swimming right because yeah. you know you love it and that's you know that's how you survive you want to treat each customer like Absolutely. everyone will have something have you heard of have you heard of keeply yes Sorry, of yeah, yeah. Do you, have you heard of the keeply effect with like yeah. restaurants just getting super busy after yeah. i feel like you guys kind of had a keeply effect with that i'm just yeah, yeah. like going really busy really quickly yeah. mostly through social media mm -hmm. Um, do you think that that's created a community of like loyal fans? Like, do you think you have like see certain people over and over again? Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah. Right? It's like the best feeling ever is when you yeah. see, you know, you know the best the best thing is seeing that guy come back the next day. You know? Oh yeah, yeah. Like, we did it. Right, you, you know the thing. It's good. You like we still we're still like conscious of like is it good is it good right is it taste good like right. we need to make sure right mm -hmm. even when our friends and family order we mess with like everything okay everything good like we like we really care yeah. that it's good so like when you see those people come back that's like the number one thing mm. but yeah the social media is a big thing yeah but like they come back and like we notice it like not in a you know like oh you're here again but like you know you, you remember <laughs> the you remember the name right like mm. you and then that creates that relationship and they want to come back just because of the whole experience yeah um so most of our repeat customers like we know by name we know what they're getting the second we see them walk outside we're starting their order 
Um, so it's it's mm. it's great. Like yeah, we we love that. How do you interact or like keep them engaged with your brand and get people to keep coming back? I think for us, it was cha- that's a challenging thing, especially at the beginning with the other store because it was it's just takeout over there. Mm-hmm. There's not much customer interaction, especially when it's so busy. Mm-hmm. It's hard to take your time every customer. So I think that's really important to focus on the quality of the product um, and having everything else be transparent, right? There are like, even as simple as, you know, we're really, really busy, it's gonna be 30 minutes, right? Just set the expectations, people will wait. People say, yeah, okay, yeah. right, no problem, mm-hmm. don't, no issue. Some people don't like that, no problem, they'll leave, right? If you, you know, it's always about communicating and making, you know, yeah. setting the standards, setting the expectations with people, that's all people want. Because the food's, like, we know, like, at this point, the food's good. Yeah. It's, it's not, it doesn't just stay busy because if, if the food wasn't good, that hype would have come down and then it would have been yeah. done with, right? It would have just been whatever, but it's still rising. We're still getting busy and busier, right? So the food is really good. So we're just, that's why we care about the quality of the product mm-hmm. every time to make sure that's what they're getting. That's going to bring them back, right? Mm-hmm. So what, what drove you guys? I mean, because this, this, the, the restaurant that we're sitting at right now, yeah. this is not a takedown. Like we have, there's yeah. tables, there's chairs, there's a place for people to sit down and eat. What kind of drove kind of a two-part question what kind of drove you know opening up a second shop and then actually changing the concept mm-hmm. where it's a sit down versus a takeout mm-hmm. um, um so <laughs> again just like the first one it wasn't intentional that it was going to be takeout only over there it's mm-hmm. covid that was the reason we couldn't have any seating or chairs or anything over there so uh, I see. okay mm-hmm. so it kind of worked out where if we did have tables and seating it would have been a disaster in there just, it you know, wouldn't have worked. It, it kind of worked way. out in our favor where yeah. we, we weren't allowed to have seating or it just didn't make sense to have seating at the time. And we were so busy that it was just takeout only, right? So we knew how to operate in a takeout only manner where we're just focusing on the food and the production behind, right? We, there's no tables to clean. There's no customers to serve, right? Like this, right. our service is our is our process. Our speed mm-hmm. is the fast we can do it. Mm-hmm. Trying to pump out that quality with the speed. Like I know there's a saying, what was the saying? Is like you can have, you can have good, fast and cheap, Mm-hmm. Right, there's good, right. fast, and cheap. You can only pick two of them, right? If it's That's good, right. it's not going to be fast, right? Or if it's good and cheap, it's not going to be fast, right? Yeah. right? And if, or whatever, those that kind of saying, <laughs> two out of three, right? <laughs> whatever, it is. you can only have two of those things, <laughs> yeah. right? Um, but for us, we really try to do all three. Like we really try, and um, you know, having the takeout only made it so we were focusing on our process, how to make it better, right? Finding the best, you know, help the best, uh, you know, employees that can get us what we're trying to do. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, like that, having the takeout only really helped with that. So when we came to, to look at this second location, which wasn't actually in our in scope our plan, of plans, yeah. it was more so like, okay, let's, we're going to look, start thinking about a next location. Obviously it's been busy. It's been a few years. Okay. okay. Um, you know, this is the type of business people want. And we had a lot of social media interaction with people outside the city saying, come to this city, come to that city. So there are eyes outside of here that are, that are, that are seeing it and, and asking for it. Um, and if we're able to do that here, you know, I think we might be able to replicate it somewhere else. Right? We don't know, but mm. that's the idea. And we thought, okay, if we're going to open a second one, it wouldn't be in London. Because we wanted to keep that, as much as the food is great and everything, we still want to keep that brand associated with some type of exclusivity. Mm. It's harder to get. Like if you go to a major city and they have that, that one place that everyone goes to, and it's always busy yeah, and packed. Yeah, 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 People yeah. don't complain about it. They do what they do well, and that's it, mm. right? When you start trying to look at it just from a purely money, I want to make more money point of view, that's when you start popping up more and more and more, kind of dilutes the product, yeah. right? We didn't want to like lose we our spark, We don't want to be that right? business. There's yeah. different business models, of course, where yeah. you know that is the, the route they want to take. Right? It's business focused and that's great and that's amazing. But for us, we really care about our brand and what we created. We don't want to ever associate it with, okay, it went off, fell off a cliff. You hear that story all the time. Oh, it was good when it opened, now it's not good anymore. We don't go there anymore, right? So we never want to be that. So that's why we said if we're ever to open a second one, it wouldn't be in London. We want to keep that one, keep it going. It's good enough. And but we're like, if we ever were to open in London, this area, like this West Five, it's called West Five over here. Mm-hmm. Um, this would be an area that we would look into. Why? Because it kind of matches our brand aesthetic, right? It's modern, it's new, it's upcoming. New. Yep. It doesn't feel like you're in London. Um, right, right, the developers right. in this area are, you know, very forward thinking. You know, they have a nice green park. The whole building here, solar panel, um, you know. Entered, whatever it's all solar panel building yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, powered by solar panels um, so that we thought it would be cool to be in this area if we were mm-hmm. to do it again so it was just kind of like a, I thought okay is, is there something there so we, we reached out to uh, to them and they said yeah there's a unit and we came and looked at it and the process took about a year and a half yeah um, to do it and again the original pro- uh, 
idea was to have dine-in over there because again it's fried food it doesn't travel well the best way to try it is in person mm -hmm. so when we had this space like we definitely need to, to do the dine-in thing so yeah. you know it's not, it's not a ton of tables but we have you know little... what's what would you say is um i mean comparing the two locations or even comparing your journey from when you started to now what do you what do you what are the challenges that you guys are facing today right because you're still you know um you're not new but you've been around for a couple of years now you've you know, you've dealt with the, 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 the crazy amount of traffic. You've maintained a reputation, which is amazing. What are, what are some of the challenges you guys run into today? Um, so I want to say probably the most challenging thing is our, like, staff or finding, team, finding people. Mm. Um, we've been blessed. Like, we have great staff at our Warncliffe location. I mean, this location, too. But the fact that we were able to new, step so back. Yeah, the step back from... Um, that location and are able to open up this location was because of our staff. Like if we right. didn't have a great team there, we wouldn't have been able to step back and work on another location. Um, so we're very blessed that way. It took a while, but um, eventually, either like our little family, like we love them, yeah. they take care of us, like our store, we take care of them. Um, and that's, I feel like that now with this location, we're trying to, we're still trying to create that team that um, the good like work, they call it like the work uh, work ethic. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I find that be the challenging part. Yeah, so to build off of that, so I, I've, if you ask any business owner, especially restaurants, um, you know, finding effective and good help is, is a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, so like even when you have a great staff or a great team, right, it is a revolving door, right? You don't you see a lot of like this type of yeah. industry, you're gonna have a lot of turnover. You have a lot of students, you have a lot of people, mm -hmm. like especially in London, we have, it's, it's a university city, so you'll see a lot of people leave during the summertime, um, so you have to replenish the, the, you know, your staff. It's hard, especially what we're trying to achieve here, we're trying to get that quality up high and have it, uh, you know, have it quick and have us be able to step back and look at how do we fix our business or how do we make things better. In order to do that, you need to leave these guys alone, right? And by the time you have someone who's trained up and you know, you found a good one, they're gone, you have to bring in another one, right? So it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's very challenging in terms of having that effective help. Um, so that's always gonna be a challenge. I don't think that's ever going away. So the way you combat that is you have to have better processes in place. You try to make things you know, as streamlined as possible. You try to give them the correct tools, You know, the best mm -hmm. training you can do. Um, but it's gonna be a challenge. It's always gonna be a challenge. You just have to accept that. Um, in terms of physically, challenges with the business, uh, with this one, again, it's bigger. Um, you got to be more on top of your organization, right? Always, you know, cleanliness is a big thing for us. We, will, you know, we're always, always watching. We right? always want it to sort of be as clean as possible. It's part of the brand too, right? Mm -hmm. That it, it looks like this, the food looks like that. Everything else has to be clean too. Mm -hmm. um, but again, when you have challenges with staffing and stuff like that, no one's ever going to care about your business as much as you do. Mm -hmm. But you have to kind of yeah. find ways or invest in, you know, your your equipment or you invest in you know, help or a cleaning company, stuff like that. I think that's another challenge a lot of businesses have. They're afraid to spend um, mm -hmm. money on their business, but I think that's a very, very big thing is, is, is don't worry about spending on your business. That's gonna, it's gonna return for you, for sure. You spend money to make Absolutely. Money. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. We learned, like, it was hard, it was hard at, hard at first, mm -hmm. uh, but we, like, a lot of, we got, like you were saying, the equipment we got wasn't, like, the greatest at the beginning because we just didn't know what, how to do everything. Um, and then we had to buy another piece, like another fridge, another, so we, we basically paid what we were to have paid right now, so we might as yeah. well. That's very important, I think. Um, yeah. It's it's hard to get out of that mindset, like you yeah. gotta spend a lot of money, mm -hmm. but eventually, I mean. Especially in the beginning, out. you're trying to say. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 That's what something, my sister and I always talk about this, like every time we try it, we want to get something, we're like, oh, it's just too expensive, let's yeah. get like the dupe, let's get like whatever. Yeah. And then we'll use it for like a month or two, yeah. and then like, we'll end up getting the one we right. wanted in the first place yeah. anyways. Yeah. Like yeah. we could have saved yeah. money. Yeah. Girl math, like, yeah. what if they think it's not the expensive one in the first place? Yeah, so, exactly. you know, but definitely, again, as a business owner, who like for us, we didn't know anything, right? We were completely blank slate, no business experience, no mm -hmm. restaurant experience, nothing. Of course, we're going to start out with the most, you know, economic stuff that we can find. Yeah. And then we adjusted from there, which we did. And, you know, I, like for me, I'm never worried about, especially if we're busy, right? I'm never worried about spending on the business, right? Yeah. It's going to come back. It's going to make life better. I can sell more. Right, I can use less staff if I have to, if the stuff is correct, right? Um, so that's you know really important in terms of. You know, so would you would you say that's one of the one of the bigger mistakes you guys made at the beginning? I wouldn't say it was a mistake. I wouldn't like in terms of like equipment and stuff like that. Yeah. I wouldn't say it was a mistake. I mean, anyone, everyone would have done the same thing. Yeah. Uh, but you know, had we been more prepared, or maybe 
if we were to do more research in terms of the market or the interest in this type of business, if we, we knew that we were going to be, or we were gaining popularity like that, maybe we should have at the beginning. If you're a business that maybe is, you know, you're going to start from zero and then work your way up, definitely, you know, go that way, right? Mm-hmm. So maybe, if, if you can. I mean, if, you, yeah. if you're able, you have the resources, the finances to get the best things or get the best equipment, I would 100% recommend doing that, yeah. right? But if you want to just start out and see what happens kind of thing, I mean, there's no... You can always grow. Just, just yeah, as long as you sure. know that at some point you sh- you're going to need to yeah. make, those, make those changes. So, like, reflecting on the last four years, what would you say were some of the mistakes that you guys made? Just for, like, people who are listening, you know what I mean, that, you know, an audience who's thinking about maybe starting a restaurant, um, I what, think, what are I some think of the major mistakes? biggest like, mistakes oh. people make, and when you tell me all the time, is mixing family or friends in your business in any capacity, yeah. right? Obviously, they're going. You're going to have assistance and help yeah. as long as that is kind of where it, where it stops, mm-hmm. right? When it starts becoming, oh, can you hire this person? Can you, you know, I have a friend that needs this, or I have uh, right. my sister, my brother needs a job, or you know, a family member wants to, you know, get involved and stuff like that. In order to keep yourself professional, it's impossible, mm-hmm. right? Like how, like, how do you fire someone? Like, how do if, okay, you, you hire your friend's sister and she's terrible or your friend's brother and he's, he's horrible. What do you say, right? In theory, like, it sounds great, like, that right? you're helping somebody, it but, just, like, it, it, it becomes, just... It becomes something that's so unnecessary to do, yeah. right? Yeah. It's so unnecessary. Um, obviously, you want to help people, right? But at the end of the day, like, if you're trying to avoid those messy things, yeah. you have to really separate your business and your, and your personal life, for sure, mm-hmm. for sure. Can I ask a question? Because you're saying, yes, yeah, separate your business and your personal life. You two are business partners yes. and you are also married. Absolutely. How does that affect your business? I think it's different. I, I, don't, I can't speak for it. For us, it's very different because <laughs> we both started from zero. And I think we're married is also different. I think when you have a business, like a, like a dedicated business partner mm-hmm. or a friend and you guys get into business together and I own half and you own half and this mm-hmm. and this, mm-hmm. yeah. it's different for us because we are, we're married, right? We're one household. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like our, <laughs> our money's one, it's one thing, right? It's one thing. And the reason we're at this point is because we bounce our ideas off each other yeah. and we know that, you know, I definitely need her or this isn't happening and right. she'll need me or it's not happening, right? So. If, you know, she knows I'm better at these things and I know she's better at those things, right? We don't just make decisions without consulting each other. And it's more so, it's not like I'm going to do this anyways. It's like, you know, we just, we, we just kind of work. We really work we together. Really like I, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, you know, like don't work with your spouse or whatever. Yeah, like a lot of, yeah. we're not really working yeah. with our spouse though. And we're not really business partners either. Like we're, this is our project that we started together. If we maybe were to say, we want to open a restaurant, I'm, you give me this money, I'm going to bring this money and we're going to do this. And then the, that's a, I think that's a different story. But when we started literally from nothing, it's literally zero, and this blossomed from that. Then there's you know, it's yeah. no other way for us. Also, like I love working here. I love working with him. Like even he'll be like just have the day off. Like just go just sit. Mm-hmm. I'm like, uh, I think I want to come with you. <laughs> so we'll just spend the day together. It's just it's just fun. Like we we like the same things. We have the same like mindset. It's like, it becomes it, 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 it's it's cliche, but it becomes like your child. Yeah, yeah. Right? Really? it's the same. It's the same thing as saying, oh, uh, isn't it? It's kind of hard managing a child with two people. Well, it's like it's our child. Like we, this is what it is. Like there's no yeah. other way about it, right? Yeah. Um, it's the same exact thing. Like we so both how, did this. So how do you manage that? Because because like it's funny. We, uh, I was, uh, every time I have a conversation with anybody around opening a restaurant or getting into the restaurant business, there's always like that one buddy or that one family member in the room. They're like, "Don't do it. It's yeah. going to become your life. Yeah. It's going to suck yeah. the life out of you. Yeah. You're going to have no work life balance, yeah. right?" It's so encouraging. I want right? I want to hear what you guys yeah, think about so that. For actually, me, <laughs> I'm I'm a very shortcut kind of person i like to like find the easy way out of things yeah right and that actually works to my advantage sometimes um especially as it pertains to the business that because i want things to be easier i will spend the money you know what right. I'm saying? i'll spend the money on the on that piece of equipment i'll spend the money to put three four extra people working right i'm not going to be so frugal and be like no we can't our labor this this it's like because it's busy right i can and i will right that's that's how right. that's how i do it because if i do that then i can i don't have to work that day yeah. right if I want, if I want the work life balance, like that's the trade off. I'm going to spend a little extra, but at least I. This is busy, and I can still live. I can still see my family. I can yeah. still travel. So, how often are you guys working together, we either we together or individually? Like, we're how many hours are you guys putting in a week? It depends, right? Like, we it depends what the business needs. Like, if if like I'd say, at our peak, we're working all all the time, right? As the employees settle that's in. Not just <laughs> no, I'm I saying know. we are. We're I mean, working. like you're always like it's, it's work, but it's like it's not really work because we're. This is our project that we're here and see like what are you gonna, what are you gonna go do? Sit at home and do nothing like we're here, right? Yeah, um, yeah. We're jumping in 
you know, when, when we get busy up front, we're here on the front lines, we're training, we're showing. We train uh, our employees, they train the next group, and so on. That's kind of how it is. Um, but in terms of how much we work, I'd say at the beginning we were working nonstop. That's not like that's the not difference right. between like working in the business, like you're the yeah. one, you're managing the fryers, yeah. you're making the yeah. sandwiches versus yeah. like working on the business, yeah. right? Like training. Yeah. Like what does that kind of look like between the two? That's kind of what I'm I would to say, though, out. that's definitely the, the biggest challenge I faced was like stepping back and letting the staff do everything. I'm the, like, and I'm the one who encouraged was, her to be yeah. like, stop. Yeah. Right? They like you have a staff, right? That knows what they're doing. Yeah, it, off, that was definitely right? very hard. And I did notice that, like, it was making things a bit worse, though, because, like, I would go in and I'd be doing work and, like, people, the staff was just, like, looking at me, like, okay, are you going to do, like, because yeah. I was just doing they everything. They also work different when we're around, right? Yeah. They also work, yeah, they'll, yeah. Ba- they'll, they'll back off a little when we're, like, their urgency kind of goes down. They know. Because we know that I'm here, doing right? it, right? <laughs> Mom and dad are here. We're, we're good, right? That type of thing. But, like, when but, we step yeah, away, it's back, all they under have control. To, like, you forget, like, it's under control. When yeah. you're, like, obviously, when you're here, everyone's going to behave differently here. You have to understand that that's just that's natural that's the way it's going to be but you know once you step away and you start seeing okay you you did your numbers like you, you did good sales that day your supervisor's reporting back everything's fine everyone's good mm-hmm. you're getting your google reviews coming in that are that are you know you don't get any complaints that day like i don't know what else you want like you really yeah. can ask for like from, from right. your staff right so the balance is the work-life balance thing at the beginning when you start your business you're going to be in the trenches of course right mm-hmm. that's normal but again like we said if you're building the business because you love the business itself that's, it's like having a kid, right? You're not going to be like, oh, I don't want this kid anymore. Like, yeah, yeah. You might think that, I guess, some people, right? <laughs> but like, at the end of the day, that's what it is. Like, it's your, it's your, your responsibility. You know, you're growing something. You know, you're helping something get better. You know, you're working hard so that way you can have your work-life balance come back mm-hmm. to you. But it's the same thing with a kid. Like, you shouldn't be doing everything for them. Like, yeah. they got to learn, right? So that's mm-hmm. the same concept, like, with, with our team. Like, if we're there all day, we're doing everything, they're not going to grow as much or learn as quick yeah. so but i think but i think that um, work-life balance question is a big question that everyone has before they take yeah. a jump that's the number one thing um for me like i said i'm willing to invest the time at the beginning it doesn't have to be a one and a half two year three year ordeal where you're never mm-hmm. going to see people it's not like that if you're plan, if you think okay i'm going to do everything i need to do to get this place to where it's operating by itself mm-hmm. it's going to come back quicker right yeah. like munya is more I'm more optimistic in that way than when you is like when we open this store, it's like this, it's going to be like the first store, the first year did it. I'm like, no, man, I'm like two months, maybe. Right. Cause we bring people from the other store. Right. We're now seasoned in how to train. We have the correct equipment, right? We have, you know, it's not at zero. Yeah. zero right. Yeah. So like within the first 60 That's days, all I knew though, right? we're back so. to, I don't have to work every night. Right. That's, it was that quick. Right. So yeah. I think it, you really have to, you know, be conscious of invest your time at the beginning and look at how you can optimize your business, right? Mm-hmm. Optimize it in ways where if you want your work-life balance to come back or you want to have more free time, find ways to get your free time, right? That's Don't be so stingy thing. and worry about, oh, I have to pay labor and this, this yeah. is what you right. want. That's a trade-off, yeah. right? If someone's like, okay, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna make, let's say you're gonna pay a salary, let's say $20,000, whatever. I'm gonna pay someone 20 grand a year extra, I'm gonna, or, or you say I'm making, Let's say two hundred thousand dollars a year. If I made one eighty, but I can have my time, is that worth it? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely, yeah. right? So That's, you're saying there's always going to be something that pays, whether you're going to pay with money or you're going to pay, pay with, with your time. Pay money, your time, and yeah. Yeah. time is more, more valuable, valuable than money in every yeah. every situation, right? Yeah. Having time with your friends, your family, you know, that's that stuff. You're not ever going to get that back. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. that's where you need to really focus on. Yeah, on that type I like of stuff. That. Invest in your free time. Absolutely, <laughs> if that's what yeah. your goal is. Like for me, like my goal isn't to be a restaurant manager per se. Like I don't. If I want to do that, I just go manage a restaurant. You know what I mean? We're business owners. We want to own the business. We want to grow this project. We want to expand it elsewhere. We want to see where we can take it. The only way we can do that is if we invest in the people and the equipment mm-hmm. and the time here yes. to be able to be free, right? In that way. This is interesting. But uh, I want to switch topics a little bit on mm-hmm. on uh, dealing with customers. Because obviously that's a big deal for, 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 for your business. Yeah. Um, both your reputation, whether it's your online Google reviews or customers just coming in, being satisfied, seeing pictures of your food that doesn't look the greatest and <laughs> talking to the staff and saying what happened there. But um, just kind of reflecting back, like what's, what's some of the, what's some of the, like what's one of the funny, funniest things that you guys had, like or sort of interaction that you had with customers? I wouldn't say necessarily the funny interaction specifically. I can't really remember. Or something memorable. Maybe. <laughs> Especially because, like I was saying, the other stores take out only. It's very in and out yeah, over there. There's not a lot of interaction other than 
you know what I'm saying? If someone's complaining about something or someone doesn't want to wait long or, you know, they missed a, a thing of fries in their bag. Like, there's not a lot of customer interaction there. We will see with this store as it, as it gets going. But we do see with a little bit of the older crowd, you know, there's, they're very, they're always asking for things that are like obscure, like there's, you know, like we're not used to it, right? So like in the first couple of weeks we were open here, people start asking for, I know it's uh, like, yeah, as a restaurant you should have the stuff, but like, like a knife. Can I get a knife? Can I get vinegar? Can I get Do you guys salt? have straws? Just like, like uh, a straw. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just a lot of things that just things we weren't like, like sit down used, restaurant. used to. Right? Yeah, yeah, we're just not used to that, right? So like we're just used to here's your stuff, we're done. Yeah. Um, now it's like here's your stuff. Can I get this? Can I get that? Can you cut this? Can you make it this way? Can you do that? So it's not really funny interactions. I, don't, I wouldn't. But you guys that. listen to your customers like Absolutely. in general, right? Like, like so. So reflecting back, like yeah. what's maybe something that you guys really like that you know whether it's a lesson learned or something that came out of like just listening to your customers in general. Do you have anything there? Like anything memorable? Like similar to like how you were like, oh, maybe we should do white meat, right? And then like mm-hmm. that became you know kind of a catalyst to oh try new things or what new we things. it's hard to say i don't really have anything for that I that's really fine don't. it's more so our employees that give us suggestions okay that we would take more seriously because i think and it, yes customers are always right but we don't really get a lot of suggestions from customers right like we like to do what we do and yeah. people like it and that's why people can come back like it's, it's it's what people want right uh, for the most part like um I think one thing that I've noticed, at least that you guys have done really, really well at, is, is um, as people are trying to get in, um, <laughs> um, is simplified menu. So like that, that's something that you don't see at a lot of restaurants. That you know, you, you go to a restaurant, there's like a, a massive menu selection of options to choose from. Yeah, you guys have a very small menu. Yeah, is there a reason behind that? Yeah, I mean, less is more, right? Like when you go somewhere and there's so many options, you get overwhelmed, you just don't know what to pick, so you just get whatever. Um, it's it's like when we go places and I find when like your niche and you like are just like really good at one thing, you can just have a simplified menu and everything is good versus having like two page menu. Mm-hmm. And like you just start thinking, like, what are you really good at? Like everything? Right. Like yeah. how are you, yeah. how's that What's possible? I find it so weird when I go to a restaurant and it's like five different <laughs> cuisines. And I'm that. like, what are you, yeah, <laughs> like you do not have five like, I would love a restaurant. That. You go and there's like two <laughs> options. It's all you can pick from. Because right? you, you know, know they'll be really good. good. Right? Yeah. yeah there you know. There's no way you stayed open this yeah. long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's, like, you don't really want a lot of choice sometimes, especially the way we designed it. Like a lot of our ingredients overlap with other offerings. Like we really have three flavors of everything. That's it. We have an original flavor. We do a flavor that's pretty much buffalo and we do a jalapeno, right? Mm-hmm. So whether that's on a sandwich, your mac and cheese, or your fries, that's it. That's all we have. So all those ingredients start translating or we're using on other offerings, mm-hmm. yeah. right? So that helps in terms of prep, in terms of inventory management, in terms of waste. Mm-hmm. That's a big thing for us, right? Like we don't waste that much. We really don't, right? So because our, our menu is so small, we have a few ingredients that we, that we need to prep or use. Um, it makes it much easier. And then I don't think like this type of cuisine needs to be complicated at all, right? Like it's like this is what we have. You can change it a little bit, and that's it. Like I really, you know, you don't really want to. I don't know. Yeah. Complicated. Yeah. Right. It doesn't need to be. It doesn't it's need working. to be. Yeah. What about like what about your prices, right? Like how did you guys just figure out like how you're going to price your products? What was that well, process? Like? Price based on you know you do your research on what okay what your food cost should be okay you do your general research on that okay what is uh, this type of um, you know how much should I charge for this? So you start looking at competitors or people selling similar things, and you mm-hmm. kind of go from there. That's kind of how you price things out. And you kind of want to be at a certain percentage of your, your margins and your, what your food cost should be and so on. You kind of want to keep it around that. So in order to, which is funny because people always say our stuff's expensive, which yeah. I, I honestly, I, I, it's expensive if you're comparing it to the most basic, sorry, fast food that there is, sure. Mm-hmm. But that's not what this is. That's not what you're buying, right? Mm-hmm. So um, I think people do get it kind of twisted over here, right? Especially, again, like we were talking about London earlier, it's a very conservative city. Um, you know, if you had these prices in another city, we have people come from other big cities, Toronto, wherever big cities they go, these prices are, yeah. they're cheap compared to what we have out there, out yeah. there, right? People don't have, they'll complain about that. People will complain about it here because this, this community is not used to those premium type of offerings or, you know, that type of thing. So, um, are you guys going to yeah. start opening on Mondays? <laughs> the demand is there. The door's going <laughs> to <gonna> open. <laughs> Uh, but yeah. So your location definitely plays a part. So like your location, also competitors, and also your food costs and yeah. what your product yeah. is. Because I think that 
it's okay. It's a good thing that it's a little bit more expensive well, than what it's exactly. that's what the product yeah. is. Well, the, yeah. in, order, in order for me to give you this stuff, it has to cost that much because yes. it's not cheap, right? Yeah. Especially yeah. nowadays. So three. Especially nowadays. Like, <laughs> yeah. if you want, like, our portions are large. Like, you get a lot of a lot of food, right? A lot of sandwiches big. You get a lot of chicken. You get a lot of whatever. It's a lot of food. Um, so if you want that and you want it quickly, like you were saying, right? And you want it uh, how we do it, it's going to have to cost because the raw goods cost a lot now too, right? People forget that part. Right, it's not just that it's a lot. It's it cost me a lot to make this stuff for you. Yeah, you know what I mean. And when it's wasted or when it's not done properly, that's a challenge for us too, right? So, that's yeah, it. that's actually one thing. Like I think that you guys have done really well is you haven't changed like how you operate. No, you know what I mean. Because a lot of times when you get into business, people like uh, or business owners they'll just adapt to like what the customer kind of wants. No. Yeah. And you see a lot of brands, like historically, like even if you look at like, you know, some of the more popular brands around the world, like say Starbucks, it's always been an expensive, more yeah. premium coffee, right? And they've stuck to that no matter what, no matter what happened, right? And they eventually built that brand. So I really applaud you guys for, you. for kind of taking I, that I approach think, I think and sticking to it. I think trust that more, right? Yes, yeah. Like you'll trust it. You go, okay, this place is always, like it's not cheap here, right? They're not going to be cheap, right? So, you know, people are always going to be willing. So I think it kind of works in our advantage now, especially in this world now where we're, everything's super inflated where if we had to bump our prices for if things get crazy, right? We're already a premium fried chicken place, mm-hmm. right? It's already expensive. So people already know like the kind of customers we get are their loyal customers. They already know that what they're getting, they're getting what they're paying for and they don't mind paying for that. So if yeah. you had somewhere that's cheap, then they get really expensive, then it's gonna be, that'd be mm-hmm. I feel like that'd be a big challenge for people if the yeah. costs go crazy. I don't really know how you'd navigate. Mm-hmm. But for us, we're really, we don't like to bump our, our prices up too much. Like in the last, uh, Minimum wage that affects small businesses like crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, people don't realize that too. Like people do talk, you know, when minimum wage goes up, everything else goes up. Because like, if we're going to turn a profit, that makes sense to keep this place open. The pricing has to reflect that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Sure. We could stop. We don't have to raise our prices, but then, you know, the bottom line is very minimal, and it's not worth being open anymore. People need to understand that too, right? So, um, you know, that's that's a challenge as well. Do you see yourself getting into the franchise world? I think so. Yeah. I think I think that's naturally the next thing. Um, I think franchising is going to allow us to be able to put more buttermilk to more places quicker, um, but also be able to step back and do what we do best in terms of let's focus on the business. Mm-hmm. What does buttermilk look like? What does it offer? How does it work? How does it get better? Right? I'm, I'm able to get to that point quicker. This is just me personally, and I can't speak for other people, but that's for us. I think you know, it's more challenging to be in the store which is great if you want to own the business and run the business and you know reap the rewards of that. That's one thing. But for me, um, the whole point was to create this project and make this project accessible, make it you know stay premium, stay good, right? And the only way to do that, I feel like, would be to franchise. If I want to do both, I want to expand and to focus on the branding and to focus yeah. on yeah. how it works, then I'm going to have to step back. The only way to step back is if I let someone else run this day-to-day mm-hmm. you know, operation. Yeah, initially I was like, oh, maybe we'll just own like a few, but then like after the second one, you kind of realize like if you want to stay consistent, have everything be like premium, you you like you can't really. Like, you're, you're not you're not gonna be able to be everywhere. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so if yeah, I want to own course. four of these or five of these in different places, I'm not gonna be able to be anywhere anyways yeah. all the time. Um, you're more like you're gonna have to focus more on you know the ground level stuff, your mm-hmm. management, your employees, your your weight, like stuff like that, right? Which is fine, again, it's great if you wanna do that and there's a lot of reward in that, but for what our goal is, is to like move this brand forward. How do we keep this brand, how do we keep it good? How do we keep it uh, trending? How do we keep it uh, exciting? I can't do that if I'm just here worried about what this guy didn't do last night and this thing is messy and he left this on and I'm worried about these guys. (laughs) This person called in sick, like that is my attention's there. it's never going to get to that point if I'm here doing that all the time. Yeah, because right? mm-hmm. like we mentioned earlier, you're going to be working in the business, in it, not, not on it. On it. And I'm yeah. always trying to find and ways to work on it. Never mind. Yeah. That's yeah. If you had to say what your dream location would be, or in the future, where do you think it would be? <laughs> That's more a you question. I mean, I want to be in all the like the major cities in the world if I could. Mm-hmm. Um, like Dubai, maybe, used maybe to live there. like yeah, yeah, I used to live there. Uh, maybe like you know somewhere in Europe, somewhere in the states, just a little yeah. bit of a little bit of everywhere, you know. Yeah. yeah, I think I think the vision for for us hopefully would be to be instead of having like a like a, say a hundred stores, I'd rather have ten yeah. in those ten those big places. places yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It just makes that it just it's more aligned to what that brand should be. It keeps a premium. Yeah. It needs to keep mm-hmm. it keeps a premium. You can you know it, it's you know it's hard to get right. It, it, it 
you know, it feels, it needs to have a feeling with it too. It can't just be anywhere. It has yeah. to have a feeling that comes along with it. And mm -hmm. Putting it in those specific places kind of would, would help. Yeah, you're bring that, bring that alive, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So what if, like, kind of wrapping up here, yeah. what advice would you have for someone who has the passion, kind of where you were at the beginning of the pandemic, um, and is kind of in that garage state right now? But they want to get to the place where... It, Open up Basically, you guys four years ago. Yeah, yeah, you, you four years ago. I, I mean, I know it does really sound cliche, but just to do it, like, it's, it sounds... Just take the jump, just take, take the, the leap, jump. right? Like, what's the worst that's going to happen? You lose some money, you lose some time, but, like, at the end of the day, you can always pick yourself up and do something else. But if you don't do it, you're really just going to be thinking, oh, like, well, well, what, 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 like what would my life look, look like? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right, you need, to, you need to find... I'd say you need to find your excitement and your passion in the process, oh, that's cliche too, <laughs> but then the end, right? Like the process is what is rewarding, right? I did, the, I, I don't know anything about business, but I somehow managed to, you know, get a lease on this place and then I got, a, someone built my store for me and then, oh look, it's a restaurant, right? Like, all this stuff is like, it's very exciting, it's very rewarding. And then the second that, you know, you see somebody enjoying what you're making, it's, it's, it's that's it, right? I mean, that's like we'll thing. still look at our customers, like because now it's dining, like just, just like nodding their head. I'm like, that's that's that that's the feeling. That's the best feeling. And, you know, and, and, and if you do it from a place of like I'm passionate about this thing, it's always going to be, you know, you're you're, you're the only one who's going to know how to handle it, right? You're you're going to know when it's time to step back or when you when it's time to let go of it or to you know or to move move it forward or to invest in it. Like that's something that you really need to worry like to focus on is is really understand or be excited about your your process and what you're doing. For sure. Be passionate about it. Yeah. For sure. I love it. Yeah. If like you don't care it. that much about it, I mean, it's, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Like what you would do in the hard you have times. To have the what passion. are you going to do then? You'll hate, you'll hate it. You'll hate every day, right? So. Yeah. And it's true. I mean, you can, you can kind of see, like, we, we, I can see your passion reflected in the store that we're here today. Like, it's yeah. a very, like, for those of you watching, it's a very beautiful store. So thank definitely you. come <laughs> try you. out and check and try out their food. It's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Bonia, Shadi, thank you so thank much you for, for being on the podcast. Thank you. It's been great. Yes. So we always ask everyone, where can they find you? Yes. We are, uh, like, on the socials. We're everywhere. Oh, everywhere. Everything. Look physically, so digitally. <laughs> Buttermilk.ca, just on Instagram and TikTok and Facebook. Mm -hmm. And then and, uh, uh, 275 Warncliffe Road North in London, Ontario, and we're at uh, 1305 River Bend Road North, uh, River Bend Road in London, Ontario as well. Nice. Come into a city near you, hopefully. Ooh, come <laughs> soon. You, you heard it here <laughs> first. <laughs> Thanks, yeah, guys. Where do you think your next location would be? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe GTA somewhere. That's Toronto. probably Toronto, that's a lot of, that's a lot, of <laughs> a lot of demand over there. So maybe, yeah. maybe that's the next natural mm -hmm. step. Yeah, Toronto would be awesome. nice. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. And that wraps up our episode. Thank you for listening to the Built By Me podcast. Please don't forget to like, comment, and share. And as always, follow us at Built By Me podcast on social media. And if you're listening on Apple and Spotify, please don't forget to leave us a rating. It does help the channel. And as always, keep building.